Today on Rooted, we are with Greg Best, owner of Ticonderoga Club and world-class mixologist, and we are talking cocktails. And right now we're going to dive conversation. in. conversation. Oh, no doubt, man. These are, these are my favorite kind of conversations. <laughs> so we're going to dive into the margarita. This is the official cocktail of Lazy Saturdays and day drinking. Absolutely. And has been for generations, right? right. So the, the margarita, to anyone's best guess, came around, uh, came about around the 30s and 40s. There was a, a Mexican cocktail called a, a daisy, which in Spanish is margarita, right? And it was brandy and fresh lime juice. Uh, and the, the saying goes that uh, some point during American prohibition, all, all the the U.S. citizens that were really upset about not being able to get their alcohol were going down to Texas and over the border, uh, and they uh, started taking these to these daisies. And somewhere along the line, a, a bartender got the idea to take tequila, which was an emerging um, product in Mexico, and swap out the brandy for tequila, and the margarita itself was born. Wow. Um, to your point, it is the ideal day drinking drink. It is the nothing says refreshing and I'm not working like a margarita. Well, and you know you're, you're gonna stave off scurvy too. There's, That's there's right, all these it's wonderful so many health, health benefits. benefits. <laughs> <laughs> it's also incredibly easy to make. And so we're gonna make one here. Uh, I've even got a hand juicer to show how easy this can be. Um, most people think fresh juice and the idea is daunting, right? It's really not that daunting. As long as you have a decent hand juicer, you can cut a lime in half, and in as much time as it takes to even say you're squeezing the lime, you can get a, a good solid ounce of lime juice right there. With fresh right. makes such a huge difference. It makes all the difference, and also, it uh, physically it makes a huge difference. You know, how many people have had a ton of margaritas or a ton of daiquiris, and you get that awful indigestion? Right. I know I'm one of them. It's old lime juice, right? It's oxidized lime juice. The fresh stuff does not impact you the same way. So we've got some fresh lime juice there, and then we're just going to measure out uh, about an equal uh, spread of uh, orange liqueur. Now, a lot of people use sugar syrups in margaritas, um, but if you look back to the classic recipe, it was a curacao, which is an orange liqueur, fresh lime and tequila, and that was it. There were no additional sh sugars. So when somebody says, you know, make mine skinny, as far as I'm concerned, this is skinny. We're not adding any sugar to it, right? So we're gonna put three quarters of an ounce of that orange liqueur in there. What's your favorite orange liqueur, Greg? Uh, it depends on the cocktail I'm making. This is a, a, a Creole shrub from Clement. It's actually a neutral rum base. However, uh, a classic French curacao like um, Contreau is wonderful. Sure. Uh, it really depends on how much of that bright orange component I want in the drink uh, or don't want in the drink. The reason I love a Creole shrub in, in a margarita is it tucks behind the lime and you really get the excitement of the lime and the tequila itself. You're not being distracted by the orange. Gotcha. Uh, and then I'm going to use a silver tequila. I'm going to use a, a two ounce plug of this. When I say silver tequila, uh, you may be wondering, well, what is what kind of tequila is silver tequila? Well, silver tequila uh, is also known as plata tequila, is also known as blanco tequila. And it's essentially tequila that has not really been aged uh, outside of in uh, concrete, right? So. You, you don't want uh, a Reposado or an Añejo tequila because those have been aged and they take on a much more uh, rich and caramely flavor profile. I like a margarita to be snappy, light on its feet. That's why I like silver tequila because yeah, it tends to be the that. spiciest and the, the most verdant green comes out of those um, silver tequilas. And some of the really expensive ones at restaurants, they're using Reposado or Añejos, yep. Super Añejos, and even, even Mezcal. We see the yeah. Mezcal. Mezcal is very there. popular as well. And again, even with Mezcal, I'd look for a very bright, very lean and young Mezcal. Um, some people, though, are a, a little averse to the smoke, so dabble lightly in the Mezcal. Right. Uh, but yeah, to your point, a lot of times in restaurants, you get into margaritas and the logic is, well, this is expensive tequila, so it must make a better t margarita, yeah, right? right? Um, the same way that people think that a really expensive rye whiskey makes a better Manhattan. That's not necessarily the case. It just needs to be well made, right? Right. Gotcha. Okay. 
So I'm going to use a Boston shaker uh, to shake this drink. A Boston shaker is a two-piece shaker. There's a, a glass and a tin, right? I have iced my margarita mixture. I'm going to set my tin on top at an angle, and I'm just going to tap the top. That seals my shaker, right? Um, with the aperture facing me so that I don't spray you if something goes awry, I'm just going to give this thing a quick shake. Again, when shaking a cocktail, do what feels right to you. There isn't a specific technique that scientists have declared is the right way to shake a cocktail. So long as you're folding uh, air into that and you're getting that drink all chipped up with the ice and diluted, you're good to go. I'm gonna use my Hawthorne strainer, which is a, a plate and coil strainer, sits right on the top of there. And because I'm really uh, a stickler for texture, I'm gonna use a fine tea strainer as well as my Hawthorne. I like a sour to be really, really silky smooth. It's beautiful. So this, much like other drinks that we've discussed in other pieces, could be served on the rocks, is very frequently served on the rocks. I like mine on the rocks. However, I also like how beautiful it is in a stemmed glass. So, so when, when to salt and when not to salt, or, sh or should we salt? That's an excellent question. So I do like salt in my margarita, much like yeah. I like salting some vegetables that have just come off the grill. I don't believe in rimming a glass with salt. Uh, because I think that that's a little, it's a little aggressive. It's more than is necessary. Right. Some people like to shake a little salt in with the drink. Uh, if you do, I recommend using some kosher salt because it's a little more forgiving. Um, that will definitely keep it more subtle. I like to take a little kosher salt and just dust the top of the drink. Oh, wonderful. All that's going to do is wake your taste buds up when you take that first sip which I am going to humbly request that you do for me right now. Oh, indeed. Cheers, a margarita for you. Oh, wow. And it is just bright, yeah. fresh. Clean it's, and it's light. simple and, and, and... And where's the pool? We could get into a lot of trouble with this, Greg. <laughs> well, we probably will. <laughs> but that'll, hap that'll happen off camp. Indeed. So please enjoy a margarita for yourself and your loved ones and everyone else that's creeping around the backyard. Cheers. Cheers.